Hello, in this lecture we'll discuss rational functions. Specifically, what are the equations of rational functions and what are properties such as their domain, their range, and can we sometimes find their inverse functions? What are graphical properties? What are vertical asymptotes of rational functions, holes in their graphs, and horizontal asymptotes? And finally, we'll conclude with the discussion of inequalities involving rational functions. A rational function r of x has the form r of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials. In other words, a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials. Here are some examples of rational functions. First, f of x equals 1 over x. 1 is a polynomial of degree 0, it is a constant. Over x is a polynomial of degree 1 g of x equals 1 over x squared. Again, the numerator 1 is a polynomial of degree 0, a constant, and the denominator x squared is a polynomial of degree 2. h of x equals x cubed minus 5x over x plus 1. The numerator x cubed minus 5x is a polynomial of degree 3. The denominator x plus 1 is linear, in other words, a polynomial of degree 1. And k of x equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. The numerator is a polynomial of degree 2. The denominator a polynomial of degree 1. Now the domain of a function is the set of all numbers x that can plug in to f of x. So for a polynomial, the domain was all real numbers. For a polynomial, in other words, raising numbers to positive integer powers, multiplying by numbers and adding the results together, there was no restriction on what you could do. But for a rational function p of x over q of x, p of x, the domain is all numbers, q of x, the domain is all numbers, because they are polynomials. However, we cannot divide by zero, so we need to avoid plugging in numbers that would lead to division by zero. That is, the domain of a rational function is all numbers except those for which the denominator is equal to zero. For an example, suppose f of x equals 1 over x. The domain is all numbers except those for which the denominator is zero. The denominator being x means the domain is all numbers except zero. In set notation, you would write this as the set of x's such that x is not zero. And as an interval, this would be all numbers up to but not including zero, and then all numbers past zero but not including it. Here's an example. Suppose r of x is equal to negative 4x squared over x squared plus 2x minus 8. What is the domain? Well, again, we set the denominator equal to 0 in order to solve for those x's that are not in the domain. The denominator is x squared plus 2x minus 8. That can factor as x plus 4 times x minus 2. And for this product to be 0 would mean that either x is equal to minus 4 or x is equal to 2. Therefore, the domain is all numbers except those two values. As a set, you could write this as all x's except 4, negative 4, and 2. In an intervals, you could say it's all numbers up to but not including negative 4, the numbers between but not including negative 4 and 2, and all numbers larger than 2 but not including 2. In general, determining the range of a rational function can be quite difficult, much more difficult than finding the domain. However, remember that if a function has an inverse function, then the range of the original function f of x is equal to the domain of the inverse function f inverse of x. So if we have a rational function f of x and we can find an inverse function, then because we can generally find the domain of the inverse function f inverse, we can find the range of the function f. Here's an example. Suppose f of x is equal to x minus 2 over 3x plus 4. Find the inverse function f inverse and then the range of the original function f. To find the inverse function f inverse of x, first we write y is equal to f of x. Then all of our y's get replaced with x's and all of our x's replaced with y's. Now we need to solve this for y, so we're going to multiply both sides by 3y plus 4. This cancels the denominator on the right, but introduces it as a factor on the left. We distribute that x across the product. We collect all of our y's to one side and all of our non-y's to the other. So this y got moved over here. This 4x, which does not have a y in it, we move over here. Now we have all of our y's on one side and all of our non-y's on the other. In this case, we can factor a y out and then divide by 3x minus 1. We've now presented y as a function of x, 
we solved for y. So we have found that f inverse of x is negative 4x minus 2 over 3x minus 1. Now we will find the domain of f inverse. Its denominator 3x minus 1 is 0 exactly when x equals 1 third. So the range of the original function f is the same as the domain as the inverse function f inverse which we just found. We found that the domain of f inverse was all x's except for one third. Therefore, the range of the original function f is all y's except for one third. Now, when a rational function is graphed, the graph often has what are called asymptotes or holes. Loosely speaking, this is not a technical definition, but an asymptote is a line that the graph gets very close to, but as x goes to a certain value does not touch. And a hole, technically called a removable discontinuity, is a point in the graph that is simply deleted. On a graph, asymptotes are indicated generally by dashed lines, while holes are indicated generally by open circles. Let's look at an example, f of x equals 1 over x. Here is a graph of 1 over x. You can obtain this graph by going to any graphing calculator or computer algebra system. The graph has one vertical asymptote. The y-axis is a vertical line given by the equation x equals 0. Here it is. Observe that the graph gets close to it but doesn't actually touch it. The graph also has a horizontal asymptote, the x-axis or the horizontal line y equals 0. Here's the horizontal line y equals 0, and the graph gets close as x moves left and right, but doesn't actually touch it. The graph does not have any of what we are going to call holes. We'll see an example of that shortly. So let's take a look at the following example. Here's the rational function 2x minus 5 times x minus 4 divided by x minus 3 times x minus 4. Observe that the numerator and also the denominator, once you expand them out, would be polynomials of degree 2. So here's the graph. Now there is one vertical asymptote, the vertical line x equals 3. Now there's one vertical asymptote, x equals 3. Observe that as x gets very close to 3, the curve shoots off down this way, whereas if x gets close to 3 from this side, the curve shoots up. But in both sides, the curve does not actually touch the line x equals 3. There is also one horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. As x moves to the left and right, the curve will get close to but not touch the line y equals 2. There is a hole in this graph at the specific point 4, 3. Here it is. Observe that this point has simply been removed from the graph. Another example, here's the graph of h of x equals 1 over x squared minus 4. There it is. This function has two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. Here's the vertical line x equals minus 2. Here's the line x equals positive 2. Observe that the graph doesn't quite touch those lines. The function has a single horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, the horizontal line graphed here. The graph gets pretty close as x moves to the left and right, but doesn't actually touch it. There are no holes in this graph, which is all well and good, but how do you find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, and how do you determine if the graph does or does not have any holes? So suppose p of x over q of x is a rational function. Holes in vertical asymptotes only occur at values of x that are not in the domain. Vertical asymptotes are vertical lines or x taking a value that the graph cannot contain, and holes are points that have been removed. So again, they are going to correspond to a value of x that cannot be plugged into the function. So holes in vertical asymptotes only happen when you attempt to divide by zero. In other words, they are given by the zeros of the denominator q of x. To find holes in vertical asymptotes, simply find the zeros of q of x. These are values of x that are not in the domain of the rational function r of x. If you factor both the numerator and the denominator p and q and cancel any common factors, that is what is called reduced form. Suppose c is a zero of the denominator q of x. If you are in reduced form, there are now two possibilities. If c is still a zero of the denominator in reduced form, then you have a vertical asymptote at x equals c. But if x is not a zero of the denominator in reduced form, 
then the original function r of x has a whole at x equals c. For example, suppose r of x equals 6x over x minus 4. We are asked to find any holes in the graph and find any vertical asymptotes. So we set the denominator equal to 0 to find its zeros. We set x minus 4 equal to 0. We quickly find that x must therefore equal 4. So 4 is a 0 of the denominator. Therefore, the rational function either has a whole or a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. Now, r of x is already in reduced form. There is no factoring to be done in either the numerator or denominator. There are no shared factors to cancel, so 4 is still a 0 of the denominator. Therefore, it must be a vertical asymptote at x equals 4, and there are no holes to be found here. Let's look at this example. s of x equals x cubed plus x over x squared minus 7x. Find any holes in the graph and also any vertical asymptotes. Again, what we're going to do is find zeros of the denominator. We set the denominator x squared minus 7x equal to 0. This factors quite easily as x times x minus 7 equals 0. Therefore, either x itself is 0 or perhaps x is 7, in which case the factor x minus 7 equals 0. So at both x equals 0 and x equals 7, the graph has either a whole or a vertical asymptote. Now let's put the function in reduced form. To do that, we have to factor the numerator as well. We can factor an x out, leaving behind x squared plus 1. This is a quadratic, but if you throw the quadratic formula at it, there are no real roots. In other words, x squared plus 1 cannot be factored any further over the real numbers. There is, however, a shared factor of x in the numerator and denominator. If we cancel those out, we find that the reduced form of this rational function is x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 7. x equals 0 is no longer a 0 of the denominator in reduced form. x equals 7, however, is still a 0 of the denominator in reduced form. So we conclude that x equals 0 will produce a hole in the graph, while x equals 7 will be a genuine vertical asymptote. To find horizontal asymptotes of a rational function, we merely have to look at the degrees and leading coefficients of the numerator and denominator. So here is a theorem. We're not going to prove it. We're merely stating the result. Suppose a rational function is given as p of x over q of x. If the degree of q, the denominator, is strictly bigger than the degree of p, the numerator, then y equals 0 is the only horizontal asymptote. However, if the degree of p, the numerator, is strictly bigger than the degree of q, the denominator, there are no horizontal asymptotes. The only remaining scenario, if the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, then there is a horizontal asymptote given by the equation y equals a constant, which constant the ratio of the leading coefficients of the numerator and denominator respectively. Let's look at an example. Find the horizontal asymptotes of each of the following. First, r of x equals 6x plus 7 over 8x squared plus 6x plus 1. Second, s of x is 6x cubed plus 7 over 8x squared plus 6x plus 1. And finally, t of x is 6x squared plus 7 over the same denominator, 8x squared plus 6x plus 1. Now in part a, the denominator has degree 2, the numerator has degree 1, so the denominator has a larger degree. Therefore, y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. In the second example, the numerator has degree 3, while the denominator still has degree 2, so the numerator has larger degree. Therefore, there is no horizontal asymptote to find. And in the third example, both numerator and denominator have degree 2. They have equal degree. To find the horizontal asymptote, we must take the ratio of leading coefficients. The leading coefficient of the numerator is 6. We have 6x squared while the leading coefficient of the denominator is 8. Here we have an 8x squared. Therefore, the horizontal asymptote is given by y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients 6 over 8, which simplifies to 3 over 4. So y equals 3 over 4 is the horizontal asymptote of this rational function. Remember that when solving polynomial inequalities, we can use sign charts. With only a small adjustment, the same method of sign charts can be used to solve inequalities involving rational functions. Here, for example, we have one rational function bigger than or equal to zero. 
or a rational function less than zero. So to solve a rational inequality, the steps are fairly similar to solving a polynomial inequality. First, flush everything to one side to get a single rational function being compared to zero. Then, find the zeros of the function as well as any x values where the function is undefined. So in other words, find the zeros of the numerator, that will give you zeros of the function, and the denominator, that will give you places where the function is undefined. Then make a sign chart for f of x using the same general technique we used in the polynomial examples. The sign chart can then be used to solve the original inequality. For example, let's solve x plus 2 times x minus 3 all divided by x is bigger than or equal to 0. So we let f of x be x plus 2 times x minus 3 over x. It is already being compared to 0. So the zeros of this function occur when the numerator is 0, either x equals negative 2 or x equals 3. But the function is undefined when x equals 0. That would be the only root of the denominator. So these values can now be used to divide the number line into a bunch of intervals, 4 specifically. Here's the number line. We place down x equals minus 2, x equals 0, and x equals 3. Observe the slightly different notation we used at x equals 0. This being a root of the denominator suggests we may have a vertical asymptote here. So let's test f of x at a value from each interval. So to the left of minus 2, we're going to evaluate f of minus 3, and we get a negative number. So we mark that that whole interval will be negative. In between negative 2 and 0, we decide to test negative 1. We get a positive number. Therefore, the function will be positive on that entire interval. Next, between 0 and 3, we test at x equals 1. We get a negative number. Therefore, the function will be negative all the way from 0 to 3. And finally, for values larger than 3, we simply decide to test at 4, and we get 3 halves. That's a positive number, so the function will be positive for all values larger than 3. So for this example, we completed the following sign chart. The original problem asked, where is this function bigger than or equal to 0? So we need to solve for where this function is bigger than or equal to 0, and we can refer to the sign chart above. Looking at the sign chart, we see that between negative 2 and 0 and everything bigger than 3, the function will be positive. But in this particular example, we are asked for the function being bigger than or equal to 0. So where is this function equal to 0? It's equal to 0 at negative 2 and at 3, not at x equals 0. At x equals 0, we would have a vertical asymptote. So the solution to this inequality is everything from negative 2 to 0. We include negative 2. That was a 0 of the function, a 0 of the numerator. We do not include 0. That being a 0 of the denominator in reduced form would be a vertical asymptote. The function is not defined there. We also include 3. That would also be a 0 of the numerator and everything past that point. So we have the two intervals from negative 2 inclusive to 0 exclusive union with 3 inclusive off to infinity, and we never include infinity in our intervals. Let's do another example. Let's solve x minus 6 squared divided by x squared minus 4 is less than 0. So we already have a function being compared to 0. So the zeros of this function is when the numerator is 0. When is x minus 6 squared equal to 0? Only when x is equal to 6. When is the denominator equal to 0? When the x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. In other words, when x is plus or minus 2. Those are the zeros of the denominator. So having factored or found the zeros of both the numerator and denominator, we move on to a number line. Here's a number line we're going to place down negative 2, positive 2, and 6. Negative 2 and positive 2 were roots of the denominator, so we have this dashed vertical line which suggests a vertical asymptote. It really only means the function is undefined there. We haven't quite narrowed down if it's a vertical asymptote or just a hole, but usually these correspond to vertical asymptotes, so we use this notation to suggest that. Whereas at x equals 6, we have an actual 0, so we plot a point on the axis there to represent that. Now let's test the value of the function at one point from each interval. To the left of negative 2, we'll pick x equals minus 3. We just compute what the result is. We don't really care what it is in particular. We only care that it's positive. 
Therefore, the function is positive for all values of x to the left of minus 2. Next, we'll test a value in between minus 2 and 2. We happen to pick 0. We get a negative number. Therefore, the function is negative for all values in between minus 2 and 2. Next, we'll pick a value between 2 and 6. We happened to pick x equals 3. We computed a positive number. Therefore, the function is positive for all x values between 2 and 6. Finally, we pick a value larger than 6. We get a positive number again. Therefore, the function is positive for all x values larger than 6. So here's our completed sign chart for this rational function. Originally, we were interested in this function being less than 0. So where is this function less than 0? Looking at the sign chart, the only interval on which this function is negative is between negative 2 and 2. Therefore, that is the solution. All x is between negative 2 and 2. Looking at the sign chart, we see that x equals minus 2 and x equals positive 2 are both undefined values. We have no option to include them in our solution because they're values of x for which the function is undefined. Also, we were interested in the function being negative, not being equal to 0 anyway, so we wouldn't quite be interested in those end cases, regardless of whether the function was there or not.